mine as a family to worship and, uh, and to lift up the name of God. I have Tom here with me as we've been going through our series on the book of John. And uh, it's been, uh, we've got it scheduled out for five weeks and five, um, five different pastors. We started off with Mike Randall the first week and then Joy Ziegler and then I preached last Sunday. Uh, what a difference a week makes, right? The difference between everybody gathering here and now we're all gathering together online. This week Tom is bringing the message and, uh, and next week Adam will be bringing the message to us. Uh, I encourage you to, uh, as we uh, continue to worship together uh, through the internet, through Facebook Live and, and our YouTube channel, the search for Jewel Lake uh, Nazarene Church on YouTube and you can find our, our YouTube channel and we'll be posting these worship services on there also along with our Wednesday night uh, public service announcements that we're going to be giving out each week to keep everybody kind of informed as to what's happening and uh, what we're doing. We uh, are encouraging you as you watch these, as you gather together to worship, to, to treat this not just as something else that you watch on Facebook and, and thumb through, but to take time out uh, to gather as a family and to lift up the name of God, to worship together. Uh, if you're by yourself, to take that moment to worship. We're going to be having um, the worship team uh, playing some songs here in our worship gathering and and bringing the word each week, uh, but uh, gather together as a family. Maybe, um, maybe gather together with one other family. As long as it's under ten people, you're good, and you can uh, you can gather. Uh, I would probably pa you know pass on the greeting time. Maybe do the air hugs or something. Uh, we'll give you four minutes to uh, to greet each other. A couple of announcements that we wanted to do uh, as we get started here is. Uh, to remind you that uh, we are meeting online, we have no um, uh, midweek programs going, uh, a couple of our ongoing Bible studies that uh, are normally less than 10 people will continue on, but if you're a part of one of those, you know that already. Um, and, uh, and I encourage you to stay connected to each other through this time of isolation. Uh, be praying for each other, be joining each other in, uh, in checking up on each other. You, most of you should have gotten a church directory. Uh, go through the church directory. Reach out to the people uh, that you're not seeing by gathering on church on Sunday and stay connected. Uh, if you have a need or, uh, or a prayer concern, this right now is being broadcast on our official Jewel Lake Facebook page. But I encourage you to, uh, to go to the Facebook group where anybody can post and use that as a place to encourage each other. Use that as a place to, uh, to share needs and, uh, and things that, uh, that you want to uh, have others be praying for you for. Uh, use that uh, as you go. Uh, right Now Media, which I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but uh, is, a, is a service that we have in our church right now. Uh, it's been, we've had it for a number of years, but maybe some of you haven't been connected to it. Uh, it is basically a Bible study version of, uh, of Netflix, uh, and it's got literally thousands of different Bible studies and content for adults, teens, and children. We've been using it for a lot of our, our in-church Bible studies mm -hmm. throughout the, uh, yeah, we, in our, the Monday night group that meets. We use Right Now Media a lot yeah. for our Monday night group. And the children's ministry uses it all the time. Uh, and it's available to every single family. You can be watching Right Now Media, going through Bible studies, having content for your, your kids uh, on Right Now Media. If you would like to get connected to it and you don't know how, just contact me personally and, I, and send me your email and I'll get you signed up for that. Uh, the teens are going to be meeting online. Contact Adam and Lori for that. Uh, make sure that you stay in the loop. Uh, we have our, uh, our text announcements that are going to continue to go out. And uh, the loop, you just text the 907-341-4148 and you text the word loop to that number. L-O-O-P to 907-341-4148. 4148, and that will keep you in, uh, in the loop, keep you up to date the announcements. You can also, to that same number, text the word prayer and join our prayer chain, 
and then we have prayer needs that come to us that we will send out uh, to everybody that's on, uh, on the prayer loop. Uh, text the word prayer to that same number, 907-341-4148, and stay connected. The other thing is to, uh, if you would like to continue to support the church through this time, uh, obviously we're not collecting offering because we're not gathering together. Uh, there are at the church location some silver boxes outside of the doors. You can come by and put uh, your tithes and offering in those silver boxes. Those will be checked uh, regularly. Uh, but you can also give online. You go to our website at jlcn.org. And, uh, and that you can give online. That will connect you to our push pay, which is very secure. It uses the same security uh, that the banking system uses. So it's as secure as online banking. And uh, you can uh, also just text to give through the same push pay. You would text the, the letters JLCN to 77977. You just text JLCN to 77977, and it will connect you to to connect you to uh, push pay, which will allow you to give either one time or set up a recurring gift. And that is how you can continue to give your tithes and offerings and support the church through this time of, um, of quarantining ourselves from gathering together as a group. So uh, as we get ready to start this worship gathering together, as we gather uh, across Anchorage and, uh, and quite honestly across the country, there are people who have texted me that said they're watching uh, from all over the world. I encourage you to comment down there at the bottom underneath the, underneath the Facebook uh, thing. Let us know you're here. We will be uh, praying for you as we see those comments. Also, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, make comments down below. Let us know that you joined us, and, uh, and let's open up with prayer as, uh, as Charlie gets ready to lead us. Join me in praying. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity that, uh, that you have given us to continue to worship in this time where we're separating ourselves physically from each other, but that we can join together through technology. And I just thank you for the gift, uh, the blessing of technology. And, uh, and uh, the Facebook Live and, uh, and all these, these different tools that we have. And we pray that, that you would be binding our hearts together and that you would be helping the church to, uh, to create new and strong links to each other relationally, even if we can't be physically together. Father, we pray for your anointing and empowering on our worship gathering here, uh, on the worship team as they lead us in lifting up your name because you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And regardless of what's taking place in the world around us, we know that you are still on the throne and that you have a plan and a purpose for our life and our church and, uh, and for each and every person who is connected uh, together through this, uh, through this broadcast. I just pray your blessing on them and on this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It's great to be here in the house of the Lord and not just talking about this building, but just uh, with with the tools that we have, with the technology that we have, we're able to be here together um, in spirit. And that's that right there. That's the congregation. That's the church. Um, this first song that we're going to be singing is Love the Lord. And this is one of my favorite songs. Um, Mark chapter 12 says, one of the teachers of the law asked Jesus, of all the commandments, which is the most important? And Jesus answered the most important one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. If you know the words, feel free to sing along or just go ahead and just, uh, just listen along and yeah, just have a great time worship.
serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love you. I will love you. I will praise you. I will Oh, no. 
Thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us come together, not just, not physically, but here spiritually. And I just pray that you just continue to be with us and watch over us. The last few weeks have been pretty scary and um, not a lot of people know what to do and whatnot, but we know that if we trust in you, that you will guide us and you will take us Good morning. Our study this morning brings us to the 12th chapter of John, verses 17 through 36. If you'll grab your Bibles and open those to John chapter 12, verses 17 through 36. We'll read that now together. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. Verse 20. Now, among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life if anyone serves me he must follow me and where i am there will my servant be also if anyone serves me the father will honor him now is my soul troubled and what shall i say father save me from this hour but for this purpose i have come to this hour father glorify your name then a voice came out of heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there had heard it and said that it had thundered, and others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. 
Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. And we, as the theme in the book of John, have been talking about Jesus as the light of the world and how he is the light of the world and he knows what's going to happen. He knows the future. He's not surprised by the situation that we find ourselves in today in the world. He's not surprised by sickness and disease. He's not surprised by fear that may overtake some. He says, walk in the light as he is in the light and put our trust in him. That will give us the assurance and confidence we need to carry on faithfully through a very trying time that uh, many, many are struggling. And we as believers are called to step up and do what we can to encourage one another uh, in this time. So one of the ways I'd like to encourage you to be connected is, is this little phone. It, it does so much. And when God puts somebody on your mind to call them and talk to them, do it right then. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're supposed to be home and separate and and. You remember all that time you were working, you wished you had time to do things, but now you do. And God puts on your mind someone to call, and you call them, and they were just at the point, maybe, of really discouraged and, and down, and they need someone to encourage them. Uh, I think we need to be about that. So back to our passage. Here in John chapter 12, we're very close to the cross of Christ in the Gospel of John. And we've come to the last week of Jesus' life here in, in this portion of Scripture. And, and on our calendar, we're coming up to the Easter time. Uh, so in this passage, it talks about Lazarus, and that was on a Sunday. So Jesus is at Lazarus, on Sunday, he calls him out of the tomb. This was his last great public miracle, calling a man who'd been dead for four days. Do you think people would be talking about that? The whole community, the, the crowds that had followed Jesus, they were there, they were, they saw Lazarus. They were talking, they were pressing in. And then the crowd that is in Jerusalem, two miles away from the little village, there's a crowd. A huge crowd and they're there and this crowd's with Jesus and they all come together and so on Monday when Jesus comes to town riding on a donkey the triumphal entry they're yelling Hosanna Hosanna praise and they're throwing their cloaks on the ground and Jesus is coming in and they're they're going for it they're worshiping they're raising their hands they're waving palm branches they're they're doing it yeah. he comes into town and there's that great celebration and that's Monday. And then Tuesday, Jesus cleanses the temple. He makes, he attacks the religious system. And then Wednesday, he takes his place in the temple and begins teaching. And all during that week, what, what are the Pharisees doing? The, the ones who were the religious leaders, they're the ones who should have known who he was. But instead of welcoming Jesus, instead of, Believing in him, instead of recognizing the Messiah, they didn't recognize him. They were attacking him all week, trying to trick him, trying to catch him, 
trying to embarrass him, trying to indict him, and all their traps, they fail. And in our passage, it says, and see, all of it has come to nothing. They, they can't trap Jesus. He knows what's going on. He knew the heart of men. And so we get to Wednesday, he's in the temple teaching, and by Friday, what's happening on Friday in the temple, they're sacrificing lambs as a sin offering. Where's Jesus? He's on a cross, dying for the sins of the world, dying for you and me. Why? Because he's the only way Amen. to cleanse sin. All, that, all of those lambs, all those offerings, they were just pointing to him as the supreme sacrifice for our sin. That's the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus was making that possible on that Friday. And so there were these Greeks that came to Jesus. And they are really the very first believers, Gentile believers, these Greeks. And they're, they're, they're a little concerned. They're not going to just march right into the temple where they couldn't go. They had to be in the outer court. Jesus was probably in the center court there, and they couldn't go there. So they ask Andrew and Philip, and they arrange a meeting. And Jesus says his response is, is really not, not what they thought it would be. When he said the Son of Man, that phrase is right out of Daniel. And for the Jews, for the Pharisees, for the Jewish leaders, the Messiah. Their picture of the Messiah was this great military dictator who would come in take over squash the romans put israel in charge of the whole world they would be then these great leaders in a triumphant warrior who takes over but jesus isn't saying that he's he's not saying that and his answer is surprising to them and they they saw all of that jesus had done those three years and yet they didn't believe. Well, would you ever wonder, why didn't these religious leaders get it? What, what was going on that they couldn't understand? We read the scriptures and it seems obvious. He, he's the Messiah. And they were getting it. What, what was in the way? They had developed a works religious credit system. I guess they thought that God had some kind of Religious credit system where you do a bunch of good and then, and then there you go, you're into heaven. And that's the same today in the world. People think, you, you ask the average person, how do you get to heaven? How do you know you're going to go to heaven? Well, my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds. That's a religious credit system that God doesn't have that. He says, my son... My son is the only way. It's one thing to believe Jesus, that he was who he said he was, he is who he said he is, but it's something else to totally commit yourself, to, to commit yourself. And these religious leaders, maybe they believe, some of them believe, but they wouldn't commit themselves to following Jesus because they would have been thrown out of the synagogue. And maybe today... Some of us struggle with that, really committing our life to Christ because maybe somebody won't like us. Maybe someone will challenge our faith. Maybe at work we're afraid to speak up because we might get ridiculed. But are you willing to commit your life, to commit yourself to following Christ day after day in a meaningful way. It, it says in our passage here, look, this is key. And Jesus said to them, the light is among you for a little while. Walk in the light. Jesus said, I am the light. And then he said to his disciples, you are the light. And he says in scripture, be salt and light to the world. What better time than right now should we be the salt and light to the world? And, and not sitting home 
in fear and holding back and being quiet and, and worrying. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to faith and trust in God and commit ourselves to him and obey him. And we pray and we listen for the Holy Spirit of God to give us direction in what to do. So we're doing that. Say we're at home. We, we, <laughs> we're scared because we watch too much TV news and, and now we may be panicking a little bit about what's going on and, and living in fear. But God doesn't give us that spirit of fear. What does he give us? A spirit of faith, and faith peace, and a sound mind. And he says, look, trust me. Trust me. And so what's been happening in my heart and life this week and these past weeks is what I said earlier that uh, I'm asking the Lord, what, what would you have me do? And he brings to mind somebody and I grabbed my phone and I called him and we had a conversation about love and caring and encouraging each other that we would have missed out on had I just held back and been quiet and overwhelmed with everything that's going on in the world. So God is asking us, I believe, in this passage and throughout the book of John, that we be the kind of believers that would not shrink back in fear, that would not hold back in reservation, but that we would reach out even more now in this time of crisis than we ever have before. So when God puts it on your mind to, to contact somebody, send them a text, send them a, a video. Uh, the reality is we may not get that opportunity again. Right. And we don't want to live in regret that we had squandered an opportunity that had passed us by to reach that person, to reach into their life and give the encouragement God wants to give them through us. Let's be about that business while we're apart at home and be that witness that God wants you to be and he wants me to be, and let's be about that. So I'd encourage you this week as you're home doing whatever you're doing with the kids and the family uh, to take the time when God prompts you, you make contact with somebody and you encourage them and give them a little hope in a very trying time when they're prone to fear and trepidation because God wants us to encourage and love each other. That's what faith is about. Amen. So I want to pray for you now, right now, and uh, ask God to bless you and help you and lead you in reaching out. Father, we pray now, trusting you that your Holy Spirit will move in our heart and our lives and guide and direct us Lord, to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, to speak words of encouragement to one another. Help us, Lord, not to wait, not to put off that which you are calling us to do and be, to be salt and light in a world today that is struggling to find hope. We pray, Lord, you'd help, help us to see that you are the hope and you are life. And it is now more than ever, we need to put our full trust and faith in you, commit ourselves to you, and follow you, and walk in obedience and enjoy the blessing of an obedient life. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> the next song that we're going to sing is No Sweeter Name, so feel free to sing along with me. i
my coffee cup there, sir. I brought my own. (laughs) Well, we are so glad that you've uh, joined us this morning for worship. We are uh, excited to do this new adventure with all of you. Um, Hopefully not for forever, but uh, we are planning to do this for the next few weeks, even possibly a month or so. So get yourselves comfortable in your homes where you're at. Uh, Next week, I'll be preaching, continuing on in the Gospel of John. I really want to encourage you to bring your notebooks, bring your Bibles to your living room or wherever you're watching and joining into the service to kind of take notes. Uh, When Pastor Tom was preaching, I wished I had my Bible and my notebook with me at the table. Next week, I won't forget that, even though I am preaching. But uh, definitely make sure you're... Take notes while you're preaching? I might. I might try that. Uh, Definitely make sure you've got your stuff with you to... To kind of have the same experience you would here in the sanctuary uh, at home in your living room. But uh, we're glad you're with us. Yeah. I want to, uh, to close us out with, uh, with the final blessing uh, in this time, as Tom was saying, as we, we continue to be the yeah. church. The church is not these walls that, uh, that are empty. Absolutely. Uh, the church is us. Yeah. And uh, God calls us, as Tom was saying, to be salt and light world that is full of fear and darkness right now is the time the church uh, is needed uh, more than ever let me bless you may the lord bless you and protect you may the lord smile upon you and be gracious to you amen may the lord show you his favor and give you his peace and may the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god the father fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may continue to sit in your living rooms in your pajamas in peace. (laughs) Amen. (laughs)